Good morning. I welcome you to our morning worship service here at Bethel United Church of Christ in Evansville, Indiana. I'm Reverend Samuel Buer, and I'm pleased to say that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Here in this place where we strive to be united in seeking God's will and in serving all people. We welcome all who are uh, friends, members, and guests as we gather for worship this morning. If you're new to us and you'd like to learn more about us, just go to BethelUCC.org. Uh, or on Facebook, you can find us at Bethel UCC Evansville. That's all one word. And if you're joining us for the first time and you're in the Evansville area, I invite you to join with us for worship out of doors on Sunday afternoons at 2 o'clock in our parking lot, uh, weather permitting. We also have opened up our sanctuary for meditation times on Wednesday mornings and also Thursday afternoons if you'd like to uh, come and participate in meditation. We can uh, continue to committed to paying our staff in full and continuing our mission work throughout this season, this pandemic season. So I encourage you to continue making your offerings, whether it be online or sending them in. And we are also now in our pledging season. So I especially encourage you, especially at this time as we dedicate our offerings today, that you prayerfully consider making a pledge to Bethel United Church of Christ as we continue to provide the large amount of ministries that we are about. And then as you can see behind us, uh, we are right now collecting for Thanksgiving food baskets for needy families in our congregation and also needy families at Stockwell Elementary School where we have a mission as well. Give generously, I pray. Let us worship God this day. Those of you who have your bulletins with you, I invite you to join with me in the call to worship. We enter worship once again this day. Choosing to serve you, God, and no other. We enter as witnesses to one another. To live out our baptism and grow into the body of Christ. We enter dependent on the Spirit. To be with us in our thoughts and feelings. With waiting hearts, let us worship together. Amen. <laughs> Let's join now together in one voice as we pray together our prayer of discipleship. We worship, worship you, you, O God, God as, as the one in whom we have placed our hope. hope. We, we share, share the, the desire, desire of your people of old, of old to, tell to tell of the, of the blessings, blessings you have affected in our lives. When, when we think about the greatest blessing of all, the, the gift of yourself in human flesh, Jesus Christ, Christ we joyfully acknowledge that our hope in you is not misplaced. We choose to serve you because you chose to touch our lives so graciously in Christ. May our faithful witness and the service of our lives reveal the depth of our love and gratitude as we worship you, O God. 
as we praise and adore you you, in in Jesus' Jesus' name and in the the power power of the the Holy Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. The scriptures for this day, two scriptures, one from the book of Joshua, the 24th chapter, verses 1 and following, and the other from the prophet Amos, Amos, excuse me, the fifth chapter. Hear now the words from Joshua. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, and the judges, and, and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your ancestors, Terah and his sons Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all, through all the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. Now, If you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. And then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great things in our sight. He protected us all along all the way that we went, and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in this land. And therefore we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. Joshua said to the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for the Lord is a holy God. The Lord is a jealous God. The Lord will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then the Lord will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, no, 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 we will serve the Lord. And then Joshua said to the people, you are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve God. And they said, we are witnesses. And Joshua said, Then put away the foreign gods that are among you, and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, The Lord our God we will serve, the Lord we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day, and made statutes and ordinances for them at Shechem. And then this passage from the prophet Amos, the fifth chapter. Alas, for you who desire the day of the Lord, why do you want the day of the Lord? Is it darkness, not light? As if someone fled from from a lion and was met by a bear, or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your festivals. I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. And even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of well-being of your fattened animals, I will not look upon Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps. But, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. The prophet Amos, the word of God, 
for the people of God. Amen. Let's bow our heads for a moment as we prepare to hear the word this day preached. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the meditations of all of our hearts and our thoughts be kept mindful of you, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Today marks a traditional day of Stewardship Sunday in many of our churches. And so it's fitting that we read today from the book of Joshua, that text about Joshua, that challenges us again to consider a covenant that we are making with God. Joshua knew the significance of the covenant. For many years when I would meet with a young couple uh, who are planning to be married, I would review with them the vows of marriage that they were about to take. And then I would inform them that their marriage vows that they are taking are actually a covenant. A covenant is, some, is a, a, an agreement between three parties, unlike a contract that many of us make, which is between two parties. For instance, when you go to a grocery store, you're making a contract with that store when you go to pay for the food. It's a contract between, between you, the buyer, and they, the seller. Whereas a covenant is between three parties, when it comes to the marriage service, it's between a bride and a groom. And the third party is God. The congregation is there only as witnesses to that covenant. When we make a stewardship pledge, it is not a contract with the church so much as it is a three-way covenant involving the giver, the recipient, in this case, the church, and God. Oftentimes, when I'm meeting with that young couple, I jokingly ask them, are you sure you want to do this? I can remember a cousin of mine, when he was getting married, the matron of honor pulled the bride aside after they had done the wedding rehearsal, and she challenged the bride not to say one of the words or one of the sentences of that covenant when it talked about God being involved. And the bride said, why would I leave that out? And the matron of honor, her friend said, you're making a covenant, not only with your intended, but this is also with God. If there's any chance you might get a divorce, don't say these words, for this is with God. I can remember my mother being quite upset about that conversation. And she asked me, and in front of me, she was saying, why would she say that to the bride? Upon reflection, I thought of that over the years. I'm not sure who had the stronger respect for God. Was it my mother? Who questioned? Or was it the matron of honor? who was concerned about her friend being put in a position that she might break an agreement with God. Over the years, although I cannot speak for my mother and her relationship with God, clearly that matron of honor had great respect for God and for what it meant to enter into a covenant with God as God one of the parties. In a similar way, Amos, in that passage that we read earlier, is dealing with a people who have not truly dealt with what it means to be in relationship with God. They think they are worshiping and following in the ways of God, but Amos has some words for them. Amos thinks they don't have a clue about what it means to follow God. God. Now, in good faith, they have offered burnt offerings and grain offerings, 
They had made offerings of well-being of their fatted animals. They have sung praises, songs to God. But despite their good intentions, Amos stands before them and proclaims that what they have offered to God, and dare I say what we have offered, falls short of what God was expecting. Like them, we have gathered as well and filled out our pledge cards and offered up our weekly offerings. We have also sang songs of praise to God. My fear is that despite our good intentions, Amos might stand before us and proclaim that we, what we have offered to God may very well fall short of what God was expecting. You see, the proclamation that Amos is making is that what we're about to be doing should not stop in worship or should not stop in the offering plate. In addition to this work, we are about to be doing justice and living in right relationship with one another and with God. And Amos says when this happens, he proclaims that justice will roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Now, you need to know this. For Amos, that word for justice is not a noun. It is a verb. Justice was something you do. This is very different from our sense of justice. When we think of justice or fairness, is when good is rewarded and bad is punished. Whereas for the Hebrews, a sense of justice is very different. In Hebrew, Hebrew, that word for justice, mishpah, was not so much about fairness as it was about the neediest in society being cared for. It's not about fairness. It's about the neediest in society being cared for, no matter the cost. A just society takes care of those who are needy, and us unjust society does not care for those in need. For Amos and the prophets that followed him, including Jesus, in their day the needy were clearly defined as the widows, the orphans, the poor. In our day, they might be similarly defined. You might find them receiving SNAP benefits or eating those free lunches in the schools or on Medicaid because they can't afford insurance. Justice is about doing for those who are in need. A just society cares for those very ones. For Amos, to do justice was to ensure that the widows and the orphans and the poor were cared for. Today, here in the United States, I wonder who Amos would consider the poor. Would it be the working poor? who struggle for health insurance, a concern that I've had throughout my ministry? Could it be the people of color or those of a different sexual orientation? Could it be the refugee or the immigrant looking for a better life, one without fear, one that has hope? Could the poor be our environment? Or women who are sexually assaulted by men who are in positions of power? Could it be people of color who experience violence at the hands of those who were entrusted to keep them safe? Over this past year, we have watched protest after protest, march after march by hundreds of thousands, if not millions around the world, 
who were standing with people of color saying, enough is enough. And in those marches and in those protests, the words where Amos were coming true, justice was beginning to roll down like waters. My humble prayer is that this river continues to gain strength until all people, regardless of the color of the skin, are treated equally in God's sight. Several several decades ago, another prophet took the words of Amos and used them in an effort to build a new society. That prophet was Martin Luther King, Jr., In both his I Have a Dream speech and in his letter from the Birmingham jail, he quoted this text from Amos, that justice will roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. And as he shared his vision for the beloved community where all people, regardless of race, would be welcomed and made to thrive. In his I Have a Dream speech, King challenged those who were content with the status quo, and he asked the question, when will you be satisfied? And his response, we can never be satisfied as long as the Negro, that person of color, is the victim of unspeakable horrors of police brutality. This was said over 50 years ago. He goes on to challenge other whores, and then he proclaims, no, no, we are not satisfied and will not be satisfied until justice rolls down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. And like Amos before him, that justice that he proclaims is justice that lifts up the poor. It is a justice that treats all people as children of God. One who knew about justice for the poor was Mother Teresa. There's a true story about a wealthy woman from America who longed to meet Mother Teresa. And when she met her, the woman whipped out her checkbook and said, I want to write you a check to support your work. And the story goes that Mother Teresa looked up at her and shook her head and said, no money. What? said the woman, no money? You won't take my money? I have a lot of money. This money can help you. No money. No money. What then can I do? And Mother Teresa smiled and took her hand and said, come and see. And she led this woman in the deep barrios of Calcutta, searching until finally they came across a a small and a grimy child. And Mother Teresa said, take care of her. And the woman took a cloth, and she bathed the little girl, and she took a spoon and she fed her. She later reported that her life was changed. And when Mother Teresa first came to the United States, she made a great speech in New York, which she said, you have to go to Calcutta to share in my work. Calcutta, excuse me, you don't have to go to Calcutta to share in my work. Calcutta is where you are. Wherever you are, there are people who hurt, who need love. Find them. Love them. For in loving them, you love Jesus. Today, Amos is challenging us to find the poor and to love them. He is challenging us to do justice and to do it in such a way that it rolls down like a mighty stream. Mighty streams start in small rivulets. By doing small acts of justice, we add to the ever-growing stream by teaching English here in our building to a refugee from Syria. The stream grows ever larger. By feeding the hungry every week at United Caring Services, the stream grows larger. By teaching preschoolers about faith and life here in our building, 
with Be by Bethel Buddies, our preschool, the stream grows larger. And by, by providing Bethel Buddies stuffed animals to those who are in need, that stream grows ever larger. By being the rainbow church, that stream grows ever larger. But by providing Thanksgiving baskets, food baskets, to families at Stockwell Elementary who don't even know about us, that stream grows ever wider. By joining with our efforts with CAGE, an acronym for Congregations Acting for Justice and Empowerment here in Evansville area, tw over 20 congregations gathered who are fighting for justice, the stream grows ever wider. By doing all these things and more, justice will roll down like waters and righteousness will flow like an ever-flowing stream. I invite you to consider your contributions, your covenant-making with justice for the poor in mind. Amen. Let's join now together in the covenant renewal litany for this day. Every day we journey on this earth is a day 
in which we make choices, left or right, up or down, in or out, yes or no. Some choices are simple, and some are very complex. But one choice informs all the others. Who will be our God? Who will we trust to see through this journey? Who has been with us from the beginning, bringing us into existence? Who has loved us and blessed us and sent us on our way? Who has pointed us toward the path and posted the signs we need to find our way? Who has been at our side when the road has been smooth and gently curving? Who has kept with us through hairpin turns and construction zones and potholes and detours? Who will celebrate with us when we complete our course and seek the comfort of eternity? Only one, the one and only. Holy one the one and, o- and holy. Will you choose this day to stay, to stay faithful to the one who is faithful to us? Count on us. Will you choose this day to place your whole trust in the one who is trustworthy? Count us in. Will you choose this day to commit your talents and your resources to the one who first endowed them? Count us in. Will you choose this day to love the one who loved us first? Count us in. Praying together, we devote devote ourselves ourselves to you by by renewing renewing the covenant, covenant, the promise you made to humanity humanity so long ago. ago. Because Because you are our God, God, we will be your people. people. Enlarge our faithfulness, our trust, our commitment, and our love, so that we may graciously uphold our side of the deal. Help us always to recognize your presence and your blessings throughout our journey. Keep us in our care. Let us now be in a time of silence as we offer up our personal prayers to God. And now let us join together in one voice the prayer that our Savior has taught us as we pray. Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed hallowed be thy thy name. name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, come, thy thy will be done, done, on earth as it is is in heaven. heaven. Give Give us this this day day our daily bread, bread, and and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. debtors. And lead us not into into temptation, temptation, but deliver us from from evil. For thine is the kingdom kingdom and the power and and the glory glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. to thee. 
us join now in one voice as we pray together a prayer for dedicating our offerings and our pledges. Let us pray. Generous, Generous God, God, with these gifts, gifts we commit we ourselves again to tending the light of Christ, Christ with our words and deeds of compassion and justice. Anoint us and these gifts with patience and wisdom to do your will. Help us decide daily to live according to your will so that our lives and the lives that our giving touches may all know the joy of your presence and the challenge of being disciples of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. And now as we come to the close of this service, we go forth this day. With the glory of God's anticipation moving through us. With active longing, we await inspiration. Clarity of purpose and new gifts of the Spirit. Go with the light of God. The affirming love of Jesus Christ. And the ever-renewing power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This service has ended. Your service now begins. Go in that spirit, my friends. Amen. <laughs>